You absolutely have to stop and watch these two videos. Donald Trump is so easily triggered by Kamala Harris and Vice President Harris knows exactly how to trigger Donald Trump and she does so masterfully while also calling him out over substantive issues that matter in this country. And that is how Donald Trump perceives the average worker. She managed to throw in a couple of points that triggered Donald Trump and forced him to respond like the trigger man baby he is. Hi guys. Well, we're back in Michigan and um, it's good to be back. And again, we have a situation where the former president is uh, insulting the people of the state this time, saying that auto workers, um, that their important and good and highly skilled work could be performed by a child, which is just further evidence that Donald Trump comes from a place where he really does not appreciate or understand how most people in our country work very hard for all that they have and that there is great dignity in their work. Um, in addition, I, you know, I've been hearing reports that his team at least is saying he's suffering from exhaustion. And um, that's apparently the excuse for why he's not doing interviews. And of course, he's not doing the CNN town hall. Um, he refuses to do another debate. And, you know, look, being president of the United States is probably one of the hardest jobs in the world, and so we really do need to ask if he's exhausted being on the campaign trail, um, is he fit to do the job? And I think that's a question that is an open-ended question that he needs to answer. That was the call. Here's Donald Trump's response. How do you think this is such a Harris said she thinks you're exhausted, that's why you're canceling events. Are you exhausted? What event did I cancel? You're I haven't canceled. canceled. She doesn't events. go to any events. She's a loser. She doesn't go to any of it. She didn't even show up for the Catholics last night at the hotel. It was insulting. Uh, they All they are is sound bites. So today, I was at Fox and Friends at 7 in the morning. I then went to two different uh, other appearances. I then made about 15 phone calls. I've gone 48 days now without a rest. And I've got that loser who doesn't have the energy of a rabbit. Let me tell you something. She should have been last night with the Catholics. So all they do is put out sound, sound bites. Uh, tell me when you've seen me take even a little bit of a rest. Not only am I not, I'm not even tired. I'm really exhilarated. You know why? We're killing her in the polls. Because the American people don't want her. She didn't pass her bar exam. She's not a smart person. She's not a person that should represent our country. So I just want to let you know that very clearly. Go ahead. When you see those two back to back, it is almost like child's play. And I, you know, I want to talk about the substance of this a little bit, what Kamala was talking about, particularly in the way that Donald Trump has no regard for the work that real people do. Donald Trump hasn't done an honest day's work in his entire life. The closest thing he got to a real job was the presidency. Outside of that, he's been nothing more than an entertainer his whole life, doesn't understand a hard day's labor. And for him to insult the auto workers and to say that their work could be done by children is really indicative of what he thinks of the average American worker. And I think we need to understand that a little more clearly. It's fascinating that so many quote unquote working class individuals or middle class individuals think that Donald Trump is the um, candidate for the people when he was born literally with the silver spoon in his mouth. Well, not literally, but you get the point. This really shows that it is ingrained in Donald Trump's psyche that he has no respect for uh, the average worker. But I also want to point to the fact that Donald Trump has been canceling events. This is this is one thing. If there's nothing else that Donald Trump is prolific at, it is lying. According to Axios.com, former President Trump's planned appearance at the National Rifle Association event next week was canceled Thursday in the latest slew of scuttled public appearances and interviews by the former president in recent weeks. Trump also pulled out of two mainstream media interviews this week with NBC News and CNBC's Squawk Box. Earlier this month, he backed out a scheduled appearance on CBS 60 Minutes while Harris appeared on the program. Trump cut short a Pennsylvania town hall this week to listen to and sway to music for more than half an hour. So Donald Trump is canceling events, but he's going to lie about not canceling events because he is a liar. He is a prolific liar. He is a world-class liar, and truth means nothing to him. But 
I do have to point out that Kamala Harris absolutely has this man's number. She knows how to play him like a fiddle. And I absolutely love this new approach. She's doing media appearances. And I'll talk about that in a minute. I think one of the reasons that they were not allowing her to do as many appearances as she probably wanted to is because she is very strong. And we all know that there are just too many people in America who are intimidated by a strong woman. And they probably thought that maybe she should shouldn't make so many appearances. We'll get to that in a moment. What I absolutely love about this current cycle is that Kamala Harris will call out Donald Trump right there in the media and then he responds. And so she has extended what happened during the debate and she does it now where there's no one to control him. He's going to say anything that he wants in response and he shows that he absolutely cannot not take the bait. He absolutely is triggered so easily by the mildest of comments or insults or, or corrections. He cannot stand anyone having anything to say about him other than flattery, which is why flattery is so dangerous when it comes to Donald Trump, because as Hillary Clinton said, you don't want someone with the nuclear codes that is easily persuaded by flattery. And then it, and this is how, you know, Donald Trump was triggered. Right. This is how, you know, he's triggered. He went down a list of insults about her over. Watch this over the mere fact that she called him out about cancellations In his response. He insulted her intelligence. His response. He said that she didn't pass the bar, which she clearly did. His response that the American people don't want her. They absolutely do. He ran down the very best list of insults that he could think of in the moment because he was absolutely triggered. This is the quintessential man child. And I'm starting to understand this election in a new dynamic. There are just way too many men on this planet, particularly in the United States of America, who are absolutely triggered by any woman who has the nerve to stand up to them and speak with as much authority as Kamala Harris speaks. Which goes back to what I said a moment ago that perhaps the reason she wasn't doing as many interviews prior to this point is because conventional political wisdom in this country is not good. I, 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 I get strategists who would say, oh, well, we don't want her to go out there and be too strong because that would turn off a certain amount of voters. But this is a different year. This is a different type of campaign. I wish that the Kamala Harris that calls out Donald Trump and does it with ferocity and intensity, the one who speaks with so much authority and fire in her voice to the point where she will command your attention. That's the Kamala Harris that we should have been seeing all along. And this is not a reflection on Kamala Harris. I'm sure she was ready to show this side of her the entire time. But I know a little bit about Democratic consultants. And when you get Democratic consultants, they go with conventional wisdom and conventional Conventional wisdom in this country bends and, and curves towards patriarchy. And what is the number one thing that patriarchy hates? It's a strong woman. Well, the number two thing they hate is just a strong woman of any race. The number one thing they hate is a strong black woman, which is why now they're calling her angry. But here's the funny thing. They can't call her an angry black woman because they just got through spending the last month saying that she's not even a black woman. This, this mashup between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump is such a fascinating microcosm of the dynamics that happen in this country every single day. And I absolutely know that I'm talking to some women in the audience who know that they don't need me to tell them this because you experience this every single day. There's nothing a weak man fears more than a strong woman. Why? Because they're intimidated and they can't stand by her. Their ego is bruised. They really believe that a woman should not talk to a man in the fashion that Kamala Harris talks to Donald Trump. They really believe this foolishness. And there's a lot of men in this country, MAGA men, who are so angry at the fact that here is yet another woman who is standing up to Donald Trump and she's doing so in a way this time that triggers him every time he opens up his mouth. Donald Trump is so easily triggered by Kamala Harris. It is hysterical and it's actually kind of sad. Because what does that mean if Donald Trump gets power again? What does it mean if Donald Trump becomes president again and he is so easily triggered by the mildest of criticism? Well, that means that he will absolutely not have anyone around him who, who will do anything else but flatter him and be a yes man or a yes woman. And what does that mean about those people who have power who can flatter him? 
Well, we see how he capitulates and kowtows to Vladimir Putin. We see how he is so impressed by what Viktor Orban says about him. We see that Donald Trump is so easily impressed by those people who flatter him that he becomes like Pavlov's dog. All you have to do is ring the bell of his ego, ding, and there he goes like a little puppy to do whatever you want him to do. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe to this channel, Really American, where I don't know if you're noticing, but the team over here is doing something fantastic and you should support by clicking subscribe right now and sharing not only my videos, but sharing all of my colleagues' videos who are on this team.